I'm super excited about our, our guest today. Mm -hmm. um, again, I, I'm going to let you introduce uh, Nelson, yes. but I just want to say from the, the front end, uh, Nelson, we thank you so much for your yes. work, just consistency, putting content out there, videos. Uh, but the, the one you did on the Harlot, on Mystery Babylon, just really uh, was a wake up call because I pretty much yes. have avoided any of this Western globalist talk uh, because I, I believe with certainty we we see where things end up, but we we can't dismiss where that at where that is, and and mm. so I look forward to this conversation today, maybe helping us reconcile the two and and show why mm. it's important to look at the one the first punch the first entity, uh, even uh, as we're looking at that second. Oh, Timothy says he read it on stone tablets back in the early days. Uh, so he's got the original manuscript. Yours may have Gog in it in Numbers 24 then, right? Uh, which, which would be easy to, easier, easier to chisel than Agag. Okay. All right. Uh, Sherlyn, <laughs> yes. with, on that. Uh, Dr. Nelson Walters. Again. Let's bring him out. Dr. Nelson Walters is a leading prophecy teacher through his popular YouTube channel, Nelson Walters Conferences, and the author of such books, Are We Ready for Jesus, Revelation Deciphered, Rapture, Case Closed, and The Revolutionary 70 Times 7. Nelson, welcome. What is the age of Nelson Walters? <laughs> is he, a, he is a great I speaker. Am, yes, he is. I am Breaking older news. than you think. <laughs> You're older than 50 and younger than 60. No, I actually, I'm not younger than 60. Ah. So. There you go. I'm well, 64 go. years, 64 years young. Wow. Well, I want to look as good as you at 64. 64 years so young. I, I was telling everybody that I, I started, the doctor put me on a, a new regiment, new health regiment this, this week of going to sleep and uh, trying that out. And so, you know, uh, maybe, maybe that'll yeah. help me. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, I, I read about all that stuff that, you know, you and your wife, your lovely wife are, are working on with health stuff. So it's good. Yeah, and sleep is a very important thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And exercise, getting out in the fresh air and exercise. That's what I'm going to do after this. <laughs> Absol for a nice absolutely. Walk. We're, we're now that my concussion is healed. So well, may let's I jump call into you Nelson? This. May I yeah. call you Nelson or would you rather me call you Mr. Walters or Dr. Nelson? What would you like to be called? Nelson sounds just fine. Okay. Nelson. And I've been on this show before. Don't you? I, yes, you I don't... know. I never, I, I like to do the courtesy of that and I never did. I just assumed and I'm sorry. Yeah. I we, just uh, want to thank you for your videos. And I know Jake has a plethora of questions for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I'm sure. Could I get a, a shameless plug in first? Please. Uh, do. Now, Jake and I were talking about me coming back on maybe back in January, but I've been working on a project and uh, it's something it's going to come to fruition here in on April 2nd. So if there are people watching and they live in the South, like I do, um, uh, my good buddy, uh, Marquis Lachlan and myself are going to be in Flint, Texas, which is uh, just uh, south of Tyler, Texas. Mm -hmm. on April 2nd at the Flint Baptist Church. And we're going to be doing a presentation on Revelation. Now, for those of you who don't know Marquis, and I know Jake does, but um, it, we've Marquis, had him on a guest here, yes. Yeah, yeah, Marquis is amazing. Marquis has like six or seven books of the Bible completely memorized. And oh, he's wow. also an actor. So he does like a one-man show that's of right. Of the Bible. And he does this all over the United States. And he has something really cool that he is working on right now um, that I, I'm not going to tell you about just yet until it's all finalized. But he's doing something else that's going to be mind blowing. But that's anyway, correct. we're going to be down there. We're going to do Revelation. So Marquis is going to present the entire book of Revelation in segments in a one man show. And then I am going to, if, if, and you could all pray for me for this, but I'm going to teach that section then of Revelation, and we're going to work through the entire book. So, um, you know, that's that's quite a project. And so I, I told Jake, I said, Jake, I, I got to work on this project. I said, I have to be ready for this. I'm going to be talking for like four hours. So <laughs> wow. I said, I'm, I am not ready to, uh, to come on the show, but I'm ready now because we're all, we're all set to go. So April mm. 2nd, Ty, um, Flint, Texas, just south of Tyler and uh, Flint Baptist Church. And if you're anywhere in the neighborhood, 
uh, people are invited. Come on down and and see us there. Hey, I've, um, I've already got a mail out uh, texted to me this week. It looks good. I mean, this I mean, this is incredible event. I mean, nothing really has been done like this. Uh, uh, so, is I it going to be streamed incredible. or is it going to be live or streamed or anything like that? We are going to uh, record it. So okay, um, how we're going to use that, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure yet or how, um, you know, uh, the pastors that Flint want to use it or whatever, we'll we'll all decide on that probably when we get down there. But I'm sure it'll be available one way or another. Uh, but, and this is likely something you guys can take on the road. Yeah. And do it at other churches. Yeah. That yeah. Open the door I, as well. I, yeah. Once once you once you do that. You know, and you have it prepared, you know, Marquis already has it memorized, you know, and, well, uh, you know, Jake, I have. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, Jake, can you pray for that right now? So yeah, can you that, pray for them right now and everybody that. can Absolutely. join in with us? Yes. Um, Father, I, I'm. Father, you know, my heart is that the truth and the reality of what's here and what's coming would get before folks who are faithful to you, but may not know. And I think I am so excited mm -hmm. to see something like this, Father, mm -hmm. a unique way, um, and a Father to see big the big picture. Uh, Father, I pray that people would attend, uh, that you would just make that a special time of your presence. Uh, Lord, you would work through Marquis and Nelson in a powerful way. And Father, mm -hmm. I pray you would open more doors for that. Father, yes. we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. Well, Nelson, I mean, speaking of Tyler, we've been at a couple conferences together there where we were on panels talking about this Mideast beast, talking about the Antichrist coming from uh, coming from maybe a revived Ottoman Empire, Islamic Caliphate. Mm -hmm. And so we focus a lot on that. Uh, but we look out and we see a lot of things here in the West going on. Uh, you know, we hear reports, you know, World Economic Forum, uh, we hear I mean, just a lot going on, the tech world. Is, is there a way that that's in the mix too? I mean, how, how can we reconcile feeling strongly biblically about this one area, but then also seeing these other things? Well, well first of all, I've never changed my mind about no. where the beast comes from mm. or that he how he arises out of uh, Daniel chapter 8. Never changed my mind about any of that. Uh, you know, there are a lot of guys who have over time changed their minds on some of that, but I have never wavered one bit. But just like you, I, I'm looking at what's going on in the world and I'm saying, wow, is there anything in the Bible about this? And I think um, I was watching before and Matt had a had a quote up on the screen about, you know, sometimes you read something in Scripture and it becomes a stronghold because you just yeah. think you, you've got it all figured out and there's nothing new to learn. And like, where do you, um, you know, uh, there's, so I always thought that everything from the, from the Western world, tech, globalists, World Economic Forum, people like that, UN, was all just a distraction. Yeah. And that Islam was all that there was. But then, um, you know, I, I read through prophetic literature all the time. And when I was reading through Revelation, uh, it struck me the word pharmakia, which is found in Revelation mm -hmm. chapter 18 in Mystery yep. Babylon, struck me very hard. Yep. And um, I began to think, you know, certainly during the pandemic period, I was thinking, well, is there a tie in here? I mean, this seems so obvious. Yeah. Uh, it, in uh, Revelation 18, uh, verse 23, it says mm -hmm. that the merchants of Mystery Babylon will become the great ones. And that word means commanders of the mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. and deceive the nations through their pharmakia. And yep. I'm thinking, wow, this sounds like exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, is this something we should be watching? Uh, pardon me just for a second. <coughs> so, um, the um it was uh since i've had covid i still have this cough every once in a while it's just mm. you know one of those things that just persists a little bit i don't know uh, jake if you were the same way but my cough is just there a little bit yeah just every yeah. now and then it's just uh 
Mm -hmm. Doesn't completely go away. So anyway, um, I see David's asking what translation is this? And this is not <laughs> translation. I was just paraphrasing. But David, I do have it and I'll read it. You know, I have the uh, NASB and I'll actually read the, the regular one. So since David asked what translation that was, let me read it to you. Um, um, and the light of a lamp will not shine in you any longer. And it's speaking of mystery Babylon and the voice of the bridegroom and bride will not be heard in you any longer for your merchants were the great men of the earth because all the nations were deceived by your sorcery. And the correct Greek word there is pharmakia, pharmakia which is yep. a pharmaceutical satanic sorcery. So it's mm -hmm. a satanically based use of drugs. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I, I'm reading that and I'm thinking, you know, maybe there's something here. And um, I began to look at, um, so that was the NASB. That's the translation that that one is. But anyway, so I began to look at Mystery Babylon a lot deeper. Uh, as you know, I, I wrote a book about uh, Revelation, uh, Revelation Deciphered. It's like 800 yeah. pages or something. Yeah massive book i don't know how i managed all that but anyway um it's a massive book but i i stayed away from mystery babylon because i did not understand it and yeah. i know joel richardson did put a book out about mystery babylon but he and i know each other and you know he there was a long time he had he had that written years ago and he chose not to put it out for a while because it is such a complicated subject yeah and so I, I wrote nothing about that in uh, Revelation Deciphered because I didn't understand it. But God put two chapters of the Bible about this thing called Mystery Babylon in there. So trying to understand it is very, very important. Um, so, um, you know, I think it's something that everybody has been missing. And there's so many different theories about what this Mystery Babylon is, but it's extremely important because they are drunk on the blood of the saints and they are going to enslave people human souls in their at least in their capital city and you know there's going to be a lot of impact from this and it interacts with the beast so yeah. um you know understanding it to some extent is very important in my mind but the video you did on this uh, it really woke me up to the fact that we're talking about two entities we're talking about a a rise or an already risen, um, you know, harlot, mystery Babylon, but then you have the beast that, that it either is brought with it. And, uh, but you, you're talking about two entities and I don't think I had ever really just that, wrap my mind around that. And so it seems like it's very important to, uh, talk about, talk about this rise. Um, you know, one of the things we, we shared as, as we were preparing for this is you, you talked about just how important it is that believers know this is coming. And again, it's, it's the, something that we skip a lot. We don't talk a lot about. I mean, why do you feel like it's so important that believers know this is, this is coming? Well, I, I was just like everybody else. I mean, through most of my life as a Christian, I would read the prophetic literature and I'd focus on the beast, only the yeah. beast. Yeah. And, and frankly, the beast is the last evil empire. But there are actually three empires. There's Mystery Babylon, which comes first, and we're going to talk about that. Then there's the beast, and he he takes control after Mystery Babylon, and we'll we'll discuss how that happens. And then, of course, there's Jesus's empire. So they're yeah. the kingdom, and that's the eternal, forever kingdom. Then that is established at that point. But there's actually three world governments that take place in the end times. And I didn't realize that I always just focused on the beast. I mean, it was, yeah. it's, it's what you did. And part of that is because mystery Babylon is a mystery. It's one of those things not discussed in the old Testament. Now, granted, there are places like, um, um, in Isaiah and Jeremiah where it, it, it kind of is mentioned, yeah. but I even have questions about that because the term mystery is used. Um, if all of those are 
prophetic of the future, or maybe just some of the passages are that are quoted by John. I'm not, I'm not there yet in terms of understanding completely all the aspects of Mr. Babylon, but you know that the revelation passages are certainly prophetic of the future. So that's something where we want to, uh, to dive into. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about two entities and they're definitely two entities because initially mystery Babylon rides the beast. He, mm -hmm. it drives the beast. It controls the beast. That was something that I didn't really understand. It sits on the beast. It holds the beast down. So mm -hmm. that was something I didn't really understand. I always kind of looked at them as more in combination, working together as a horse yeah. and rider kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But if you think about a horse and a rider, who is it that has their hands on the reins? It's the rider who has the hands mm -hmm. on the reins, not really the beast. And I had it kind of backwards, I think, in my original thinking yeah. because I was so beast focused. So um, here, reading from the NSAB again, and he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, which is interesting. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast full of blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. So there's the beast, you know, definitely. But the woman, Mystery Babylon, is seated on it. And then later, in chapter 17, verse 18, um, the woman who you saw is the great city, which is another interesting term we'll talk about in a few seconds, which reigns over the kings of the earth. So this mystery Babylon reigns over the kings of the earth. And since the 10 horns are 10 kings, it's reigning over the 10 kings. It's reigning over the beast. So that was an aspect of this that I just did not understand at first. Absolutely. As you're saying this, I'm just thinking of pretty much all the prophetic literature I've read, which, mm -hmm. you know, we wouldn't agree with a lot of the positions of, of a lot of it, but every bit of it basically talks about things that are the text would say belongs to the harlot belongs to the mystery Babylon and attribute them to the beast. And it's, it's as if I don't see anybody dissecting the two as you've done. And I mean, I think this is just incredible. Um, you, you mentioned a couple things. You mentioned the wilderness and the great city. Um, dive into why those are interesting. Uh, I, I'm sorry. What did you say, Jake? Yeah, you oh, mentioned why are the, they talking more about the Great City. Okay, well, let's talk about the Great City. All right, so the first thing is that when you read Great City, I always thought about um, the Great City uh, as being uh, a city, a single city. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a big city. It's a great city. Well, actually... Great city, I think, means something different in the Bible. And uh, if we go to Genesis, for the very first time it's mentioned, guess what it's mentioned in conjunction with? It's mentioned in conjunction with Babel, the yeah. original yeah. Babylon. Yeah. And um, let me see here. It's 10, 8. So Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 through 12. Now, Cush became the father of Nimrod. He became a mighty one on the earth and was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it says like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalna in the land of Shinar. From that land, he went forth into Assyria and built Nineveh and Rehobothir and Kala and resin between Nineveh and Kala. That is the great city. Hmm. So you wow. read that and you say, oh, the great city is two separate empires. It's Assyria and it's Babylon. Hmm. It's a big, great city meant something different in the times of Genesis when Moses was writing than we think of it today. We don't use the term great city, but it looks like it was a, uh, like a combination of cities. Yeah. An empire, in other words. Yeah. So when I read Great City, in that's what it's referring to. It's referring back to Genesis and the use back there. And when Revelation calls Mystery Babylon a great city, it's not necessarily a city like Mecca, New York, 
Rome, Jerusalem, all of which have been suggested as cities to be the great city of Mystery Babylon. Mm -hmm. Mystery Babylon is going to be an empire, but of course it has to have a capital. And yeah. when it says it took me into the wilderness, um, and we also know that it is by the sea because sea captains later see that Mystery Babylon is burning and they yeah. see smoke rising and they're on the sea and they see this. So I have always believed this goes back before I began to think about how the globalists might be involved. But I've always thought that perhaps this new city of neon that's being built on the Red Sea by Saudi Arabia might just be the ticket for their their capital city. And um, it's just the thought. I mean, you know, I'm just kind of putting some well, of this yeah, stuff but, together. It's not like I have it all figured out. yet. Right. No. And it's, 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 it's we're trying to <sighs> safely speculate a bit. But I think it helped. I think we kind of have to a little bit here to understand this distinction. Uh, but as you say, Neom, I was watching some videos on Neom this past week. And, you know, initially I just focused on the, the city, the infrastructure. But now they're talking about this line that actually goes through multiple nations. I mean, it, and as you're describing what you described of, Nim of Nimrod's connectivity of the cities, it sounds exactly mm -hmm. what is being said there. And Neom, I, I, I saw where the first portion like the first stage of its development is already almost completed and it's going to be a smart city it's exactly what globalists would love to have you know all the tech everything's going to be smart based in that city and it it just seems you know people say oh well if it if if mystery babylon is un based well wouldn't it be new york well i don't necessarily think so I think they might want a city that they can they can basically build their way. So I, Neom seems, you know, we're, we're talking about stuff we haven't seen yet. Right. You know, we're, we're looking at the Bible and we're um, we're trying to figure out as best we can. But a lot of this stuff doesn't exist yet. So some yeah. of it is very speculative. But, you know, it's just an idea that maybe Neom is going to be the city. Well, mm. and let me dive through because I, I talked about, I think it's, it's so hard for us to dissect what we're reading about the beast, what we're reading about this other entity. Yeah. Uh, and, and John 316 KJB, thank you so much for getting, getting comment in. You said Nimrod built Babylon. So the antichrist will build his own Babylon and it could be neon possibly. And Nelson, if I understand you right, you're connecting what we read, what you read about Nimrod to the harlot to this end there versus the the beast where the, ant, and the antichrist is is the beast his kingdom's the beast and so we're talking about two parts am i straight on that yes that's the way i'm seeing it remember uh nimrod was you know the king of babel he was he was a babylonian and um so this, that verse, and John applies the term great city, I think like eight times, I'm not 100% sure, but I think yeah. it's something like eight times he applies the term great city to Babylon. Wow. So, um, you know, obviously, uh, there are only a few Old Testament references to it, that term great city. So, um, you know, and the initial primary reference was Babel. It's, it's obvious that that's, to me anyway, that that's where John was getting that or the angel that told John, because, you know, obviously yeah. the angel gave it to John. But well, let me let me throw out some speculation here. So so I'm the one causing trouble uh, because to kind of make this point. You mentioned to me. So we, we read in the text again that the harlot rides the beast. Uh, the beast turns against her at some point. Yes, he and does. And so if we're speculating Neon might be the city, we're talking about whatever makes up this harlot builds Neon, runs Neon, or at least is attempting to, and at some point it falls, the beast is turned against it, and if that's the Antichrist, the Antichrist basically defeating that city or taking charge and taking charge of the network there. Am, am I on track? 
I, to me, that's the way I see it. Um, in uh, Revelation, it says, and the ten horns, which you saw, and the beast, these will hate the harlot. So they're, they're, that eliminates any thought that you had that these two are working together and will make her desolate and naked and will eat her flesh and will burn her with fire. So to me, I yeah. don't know, that, does he take them out with a nuke? You know, I, does he take Neom out? Um, do you, do you know, he, oh, I was because I've never, that's the first time talking to you two right now that I've heard of Neom. And I just looked it up. And it is. Neom is the name of a future planned city to be built in the Tabuk province of northwest Saudi Arabia. It's planned to incorporate smart city technologies and to function as a tourist destination. The site north of the Red Sea, east of Egypt, across the Strait of Tyran and south of Jordan. Yeah, so it's 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 south of Israel, south of, uh, it's in the north east corner of Saudi Arabia, right on the Red Sea, very That's, close to Mount Sinai. The, yeah, you know, that, I just the got Jebel the chills. Laws. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I think Jabal al is within the yes. land mass of what they consider to be Neom. They, they're, uh, MBS is, um, Mohammed bin Salman is planning a, a just a giant city. Yes. Per, yeah, and so he, what he's talking about is that's where possible Mount Sinai is. And so, I mean, that puts it a whole nother label. So Kevin said, we uh, mentioned the, the 10 Islamic nations, and uh, I just wanted to come back to that. Oh, here it is. Um, and, and me and Nelson are saying, yes, we're saying, yes, there is going to be this confederation of, you know, Islamic caliphate. This is going to be there. Mm -hmm. But before that, there is maybe it already exists, whatever is the harlot, and, and will rise and somehow the beast, the Antichrist, the Islamic Caliphate turns against it. You, you keep using the term globalist. I've used the term globalist. I have no idea what I'm talking about when I say it. What are you talking about when you say the term globalist? Individuals. Well, let's talk about how, uh, before I talk about what a term globalist is to yeah. me, uh, let's read about how Mystery Babylon rises, because I think that's very, very important. Yeah. And it, it's very contemporary. Here's what it says. It's uh, the Bible says. Your merchants. And for that, I read billionaires. So mm -hmm. your billionaires. Were the great men, which means commanders of the earth because all the nations were deceived by your pharmacia. Mm. So it the great ones, the, and that's the later, I mean, later in Revelation, earlier in Revelation at the, it's actually later, but it's like earlier in the book in uh, at the sixth seal, it's the great ones who are hiding in the rocks in their bunkers underground uh, when the when the uh, signs happen in the sun, moon, and stars, and Jesus appears, so um, we are talking. These are the guys that are among those hiding in the rocks of the ground. Um, and who are they? They're Bill Gates, uh, the World you know, Economic Forum. Yes, those guys, the Davos guys, the Davos become guys. The great yeah. ones. Now it's very interesting that the UN has moved up from everything that I can tell. Um, there are some documents that we have, we have a video on this, have moved up their agenda 2030 to 2023. Also, oh, the year, really? also the year that Turkey is interested in possibly expanding there. So 2023 is a very interesting year. Um, not date setting, just saying it's a very interesting yeah. year, but the UN has moved up and what they want to do is they're going to establish a group and they're going to mm -hmm. call these guys the thought leaders yes a very yes. scary term and they're going to be their stakeholders they're going to be yeah. the billionaires they intentionally mentioned that they may be former world leaders well to me i think of one man when they talk like that and that would be barack obama yeah um, so guys like that so gates obama you know Source. all these uh pardon Source. Oh, yeah, maybe he would be on that group. Now I, and, now I feel like I'm talking to Doug Carter. 
<laughs> so, we had Doug Carter but, on last week, and he talked so about the UN, part of it. Yeah, the UN is going to establish, they've already mentioned that these guys then are going to decide mm -hmm. how to come up with a world governance system. Mm -hmm. And what that means is a loss of national sovereignty. Yep. So basically the idea is now the, the countries are not going to willingly give up their national sovereignty. I don't believe just yet, but look at what's happening right now. First of all, we had uh, a pandemic mm -hmm. and while um, the, the Ukraine issue is going on on March the 1st, the, the Davos people mm -hmm. are putting together a, uh, a treaty, a world treaty to put the WHO in charge of all health care in the world as a pandemic prevention type of thing. There's some name. I It's in one of my videos. I, I can't recall it off the top of my head, but they're looking to do that. Um, look at the how the the nations are coming into lockstep. I heard that word today. Uh, I, I had to run down to my office uh, for my day job, and I heard um, Biden use that word. He said the nations are all in lockstep, um, you know, against Russia. Yeah. And um, the Washington Post had an article. He said that in the article they said that um, the the Russian Ukraine crisis is a turning point in history because never have the nations been so aligned against a common foe. There's a lot of stuff. And I, you know, my own personal opinion is a lot of what we're seeing is orchestrated and it's just to get people to accept. And all, all that's really needed, of course, is to, uh, to have a, a, a global economic sh meltdown right it's they, they want they want westlessness is what they're calling a lot of their plans we only have two minutes maybe we can go over we're gonna a have to bit. borrow a few extra because there, there's yes we there, have a to couple borrow. of warnings yes. i want to make sure to pull out a nelson with this i just want to say from like a textual end uh you know when we look at that text uh revelation 17 revelation 18 uh it is very peculiar how it talks about merchants and I think it's what you're talking about here is when I went back and re-examined it, I'm like, it's very strange. And I want to chase down where that may appear uh, somewhat in the Old Testament as well. But it's very peculiar. And if we just look at the stage right now, I mean, it's the social media company. It's the large corporations. It's the techs. It's yeah. all the tech companies. It's it's the pharmaceutical companies. It's, you know, it's all the corporations. It's Amazon. It's it's yep. all those guys yeah and they're they're basically funding and running the world economic forum so when you, the yep. world economic forum says they're looking for a great reset that yep. tells you the billionaires are looking for a great yep. reset that's what they're driving for and if we only have do we only have two minutes is that correct yeah you uh, can take minutes, five yes. you could take five yeah. <laughs> I want I wanted to say something because I really think when it comes to this issue, the um, almost everyone in the Christian church is deceived. And I want to explain how that is. Let's yeah. say you're looking for a pre-tribulation rapture and you think you're out of here before the, um, the beast comes on, the, on, on board. And let's say you're right. I don't happen to believe in a pre-trib rapture, but let's say you're right. Nobody is expecting mystery Babylon to be drunk on the blood of the saints or to enslave vast numbers of the population of the world. But that's what the Bible tells us mystery Babylon is going to do. Does anybody think they're going to be out of here before mystery Babylon? I've not heard anything. I've never heard anyone say that. So the kind of things that people who believe in a pre-trib rapture are thinking they're going to escape, they may not escape. Number two, let's think about people who are looking at a Roman um, uh, Antichrist. Well, they're expecting exactly this, but there's a difference. They're expecting these guys to be 
the Antichrist, the Antichrist to be a globalist. But mm -hmm. but the Bible tells us the beast is actually going to destroy this system. They're missing that there's an Antichrist who comes later. And then people like myself who were uh, Islamic Antichrist believers, we were totally disregarding the whole globalist aspect of this because that it, that it wasn't biblical, that this was just a distraction. At least that was my opinion for a long time. And so it's just about everybody missing this piece, at least the way I'm seeing it now. Mm. Mm. We got to have you come back on. Yeah. This, it's, it, it's like we're yeah. starting a whole new conversation that needs to be fleshed out. We, we need to talk about this more. But I mean, and I, I don't put words in your mouth, but those three warnings that you gave and that's why you're doing what you're doing. And I mean, it's, yep. it, we're, we're not just trying to get knowledge out there though. It, it's right. helpful. I mean, we want to prepare best we can our, our families, our friends, you, you know, and, and help you walk through these times and, and be faithful. Nelson, this is absolutely incredible. Um, I think really, I don't want to use the word, groundbreaking because it's been there it's there in the text it's 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 there but i think very pivotal i know for me and i imagine for many watching and listening um with that uh and i think there's so many more elements we bring you bring into this you've got china's belt road initiative which mm -hmm. it's trying to cut through the middle east as well i mean there's just so many elements here uh nelson to tell folks the best way to to keep up with what you're doing they've already subscribed to your youtube channel and i want to thank you you gave us a shout out a few weeks back and incredibly uh in enhanced our subscription list here at youtube just single-handedly we thank you for that thank and, you uh, Nelson, how, how can well, folks they, better follow they, you well, and and leave us well with one something. thing is they can follow you guys because uh you know standing firm how, how do you prepare you stand firm, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in the face of all these things, whether it's the beast, whether it's Mystery Babylon, whatever the kind of things we're going to face in the future, we got to learn how to stand firm. So, you know, shouting out you guys is a great, easy thing. Uh, my YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com slash Nelson Walters. And, uh, you know, people can, if they're not following, they can. And um, it's like, you know, what's coming next? Who knows? You know, it's mm -hmm. just, you know, Jesus told us, uh, I think between Paul and Jesus, they said to watch and be watchful for what's coming like 30 times in the, yes. in the gospels and in the epistles. So it's like, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. We're just supposed to know our scripture already. So if you're not reading, you, mm -hmm. you got to get into the scripture because mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit will bring to your mind something that you read. And then you'll say, oh. I read that. And look, you know, this is what's mm. happening. That's the yes. way you should apply it. Not try to look at what's happening and then try to say, oh, well, where this, where's this in scripture? Right. You know, have that scripture, you already, know, yes. already here, Amen. maybe not as much as my buddy Marquis, but uh, <laughs> boy, I, if I could, you know, yes, David, David was asking at the beginning, what verse is that? And, you know, I, I have a basic idea what the verse says, but you know, maybe not have it exactly memorized, mm. but but I, I wish I had that gift. I, I just mm. don't. But um, well, we're glad you uh, have the gift you have. Yes. Thank well, we you. All Thank are you so part much. Of the same team. Yes. You know. Yes, yeah. we're all the watchmen on the wall, and we're looking in different directions, but we all have. We're all watching for the same Jesus to come. That's Nelson, right. thank you so much. Please hang out just for a few minutes after we close, because I want to ask you a question off. Air. I'll be happy to. God, God bless you. And thank you, everyone. And we're praying for you. And if we didn't get to your questions, please just Jake at Stan. J, is it Jake at StanfordMinistries.com? If yeah, you have a question. Our message, wherever you're at. Wherever you're, God you're, bless well, you. Go over to our, yep. our channel. Like, subscribe, and, uh, and shoot a message our way. God bless you.